market garden, 90,000 men, 4,500 aircraft, and tons of artillery. The only things this market was selling was air power, firepower, and a whole lot of freedom. But it all came at a cost, a price that so many paid. Three months after D-Day in September of 1944, British Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery persuaded American Supreme Allied Commander General Dwight D. Eisenhower to join the largest multi-day airborne operation in history. Market Garden was its name, and it was actually a two-part offensive, Market and Garden. Market was the airborne part of the operation, consisting of more than 40,000 troops. Their objective was to secure Highway 69, also known as Hell's Highway, and capture five key bridges in the cities of Zahn, Vegel, Grave, Nijmegen, and Arnhem. The highway and bridges would allow Allied troops to bypass the infamous Siegfried Line. Better known as the West Wall, the Siegfried Line was a defensive front along the western border of Germany, fortified with tanks, bunkers, and vehicle traps. It was hundreds of miles long, stretching from the Germany-Switzerland border to the town of Cleva. Garden was the ground part of the operation, consisting of roughly 50,000 ground troops and armored tanks from the British 30 Corps. Having already swept through France and Belgium in the summer of 1944, their objective was to continue moving north on Highway 69, reuniting with Allied airborne troops and advancing into northern Germany. With the combined effort of Market and Garden, the Allies were expecting to move armored units into northern Germany, attack and secure Rohr, Germany's industrial powerhouse, and continue fighting their way to Berlin ending the war by Christmas of 1944. But the Allies were unsuccessful, capturing only four of the five key bridges. The last critical bridge in the city of Arnhem remained under German control until the end of the war. Now despite much of history calling Market Garden an Allied failure, others see it a little bit differently. We are already 70 years liberation, and that's why we're doing this here, to thank all the veterans all the people who landed on the coast from Europe, so we can now celebrate that. And we can remember all the soldiers who died for us. For the Dutch city of Eindhoven, September 18, 1944, was their Independence Day. To honor the operation that freed them from German control, Eindhoven hosts a commemoration every year for Market Garden. This year is the 70th anniversary, which means even the youngest World War II vet is nearly 90. From parades, to reenactments. The Dutch spare no expense in showing their appreciation and respect to service members both past and present. People here just glad to see Americans wearing American flags reenacting what had happened. It makes you proud to be a military member and it's impressive how many people's lives that we touched back 70 years ago. Arguably the most exciting festivity with eight countries participating was the airdrop. Two American C-130J Super Hercules from the 37th Airlift Squadron were just a couple of the planes transporting paratroopers to reenact the drops of 1944. It was an eye-opening to me how important Operation Market Garden was to the Dutch. There were about 20,000 people at the drop zone watching people jump out of airplanes. I've never seen anything like that. So it was amazing to me that the Dutch hold Operation Market Garden in such esteem. The 37th Airlift Squadron, based out of Ramstein Air Base in Germany, has an extensive World War II history. Seven decades ago, it was designated as the 37th Troop Carrier Squadron with the call sign of Whiskey 7. One of the main aircraft used by the Allies in World War II, the Douglas C-47 Skytrain, is what the 37th used to transport troops and cargo in support of numerous operations, including D-Day and Market Garden. It's important that we remind people that we worked together in the past 70 years ago, we can still work together today. There's a lot of problems in the world, and we need allies in order to solve it. And the more we work together on these commemorative operations, these training exercises, whenever it comes down to the real deal where we have to go defend freedom, if we can do it in training, then we'll be able to do it better when it comes down to the real thing. But before the airdrop, the paratroopers had a chance to meet someone special, an encounter that many will remember for the rest of their lives. Meet Mario Petruno, a 93-year-old Army veteran of the 101st Airborne Division. He jumped in both D-Day and Market Garden, was wounded in both operations, and awarded two Purple Hearts. Summer 17, 40,000 of us jumped in Holland 
we were to open a corridor 40 miles long for the British tanks. They were supposed to be in Berlin by Christmas, 44. I jumped down, we jumped down in first, 101st and the south, southern end near uh, Zahn. Our objective was Eindhoven, Bess, Vecco, the bridges and uh, the highway, open the highway. We took Eindhoven on the uh, 18th and the tanks came on this morning of the 19th. My buddy and I, he says, let's get on the tanks and be the first, one of the first to get into Berlin. So we got on and we rode the tanks up Hell's Highway. It took us seven hours to go 30 miles. Oh, it was murder. We get to uh, Nijmegen Bridge. The tanker stopped again. So my friend and I, we said, how the hell with this? We joined the 505 82nd at Nijmegen. And uh, they were going to street fight, street to street, house to house. It was, it was rough. About 10, 11 o'clock, three squads of Germans counterattacked. The next morning, at 8 o'clock, I got shot in the face, knocked out of action, and sent home. Even 70 years later, Mario is still airborne at heart. You want to go jump today, Mario? And jump today. <laughs> All right. Nice bunch of guys. 70 years ago, I looked like that. I'm 93. You want to see me do 50 push-ups? Yeah, let's see. Which hand? Uh, whatever hand you choose. <laughs> Commemorations like this celebrate the past, educate the present, and strengthen the future. Unfortunately, these brave soldiers won't be with us much longer. But the people of Eindhoven will ensure those that brought freedom to their city all those years ago are never forgotten. Airman First Class Austin Siegel, Eindhoven, Netherlands. We got very, very lucky that we are still after 70 years still have peace here in the Netherlands and we all thank that to the Allies. And that's all I want to say, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs>